as I do uh, have two monitors, but um, um, not today. <laughs> so it's a uh, it's it's going to be a little bit of a challenge, but I think we've uh, I think we've managed it. Well, if anything, the last year has taught us is how to overcome and adapt. Um, yes, <laughs> that's right. So, um, according to according to my wristwatch, uh, we we have uh, reached our uh, start time, and so uh, welcome everybody. We um, will have a session for approximately uh, two hours today. I'm I'm Al Morton. Um, co-chairing uh, the Benchmarking Methodology Working Group with uh, Sarah Banks. Hello, Sarah. Good morning. And um, we have our, uh, our alternate uh, Ops Area Area Director with us today, Rob Wilton. Uh, Rob, uh, welcome. Hi, Rob. And um, so we have... Uh, we have we have a actually not too deep an, an agenda today, so we can we can afford a little bit to uh, uh, take some time uh, with uh, discussions and, and so forth, and, and that's probably a good thing. So uh, we will uh, we will do that today. Um, let's see. Uh, there's something else I wanted to. Oh yes. So um, we we have the note well. Which, uh, which we always uh, go through here. But our, our own version of this is that we, you know, we work as individuals and we try to be nice to each other. And those are not too hard to do. <laughs> uh, but then also, uh, as a reminder of the IETF policies, um, such as patents in the code of conduct, it's uh, um, meant to uh, this. This slide is meant to remind you that we we have policies in those regard. Uh, e everything you uh, say or do at a meeting is a contribution, as such is covered by the IPR policy. And if you have any questions, um, there's a, a whole list of uh, best current practices that you can uh, refer to, and the privacy policy. And if you have a um, um, encountered someone not working respectfully with you. We have the uh, um, ombuds persons and the uh, the obs, ombuds team and a website where you can get in touch with them or learn more about that process. Any questions about the note? Well, good. All right, so as I mentioned, uh, here's our agenda. Um, do we have any uh, volunteers to take notes in the in the 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 normal list of uh, folks who are are attending? Okay, so this is this is the the quietest part of the meeting. <laughs> and uh, I'm happy to volunteer. If no one else is. Well, well, thanks very much, uh, Rob. I, I was hoping to get uh, uh, hope, hoping to get you some help there, but uh, you did volunteer in advance, and, and we very much appreciate that. And um, actually, uh, if if anyone wants to help Rob, the the tool is uh, our um, uh, let's see, the tool is is our uh, note taking tool here on the um, uh, on the the user interface. And, uh, and, and, and actually, to help out here very quickly, Rob, and hopefully I won't crash everything, um, I'm, gonna, I'm going to, oh yeah, I've got to click it yet. All right. And then, oh yeah, good. Uh, what is this? Uh, all right. So, um, yeah, so, the, so this, is, this, is the, this is actually the past, uh, the agenda version one. Um, oh, maybe it's okay. Yeah, this is fine. All right, this is good. So that that's perfect. Thank you. So so we've got the uh, we've got the agenda to work from in the in the code EMD uh, note taking tool. Excellent. Thank you very much. All right. So I'll I'll wrap. Uh, I'll do my best to help out. Uh, it's Machek. Hi. Hi, Machek. Uh, yeah, good to hear your voice, and thank you for your offer of help. Everyone uh, appreciates it. So then, um, 
you know, we can easily monitor uh, Jabber and, and other things in the, um, uh, in the Miteco uh, interface uh, that our Miteco developers have kindly provided. Again, thank you for that, guys. And, um, and we've, uh, we, we've gone through the IPR and the, you know, the uh, note well. So, um, any, so then now we're, we'll quickly talk about the agenda, any bashing needed. Um, we have the working group status that we'll talk about. Uh, some feedback on the back-to-back uh, -back frame draft we'll cover quickly because it probably affects a lot of things. Um, then we have the, uh, the working group drafts. Some of these will go quickly, others we'll, we'll need to talk about a bit. And, and then a, a proposal that received a lot of discussion over the last uh, interim period between meetings, uh, the Yang data model. Uh, so, uh, so we'll go in this order and uh, any comments or any bashing needed on, on that. All right, sounds good. So um, uh, if there's any other business uh, and, and if there's any other time, we will uh, we'll cover items at the end if, if folks wanna talk for a few minutes. And uh, then we'll, uh, we'll move ahead with the agenda. Thank you. So here's the quick status. Uh, the EVPN draft is uh, back to the working group uh, post uh, area director review. Um, and, and Sarah has called for a, uh, a working group last call there uh, a day or so ago. And then after that, we will uh, uh, return to uh, publication requested if it's a favorable uh, last call. Thank you for uh, uh, moving that along, uh, Sarah. And, and thanks to uh, uh, Brian Monkman for comments and um, uh, Sudin, the uh, lead author, for providing a draft uh, for this group. So I've just mentioned the the back-to-back -back frame draft. It's approved, and, uh, and I'll talk about those implications uh, in a moment or two. They're they're part of this uh, slide deck. So um, in in next uh, generation firewall uh, benchmarking, uh, we had a working group last call on on uh, version 05, which uh, really generated a lot of good comments, and um, we, uh, you know, I'm going to shut my email down now, I think. <laughs> Good. All right. Uh, so then, um, uh, so now we have the revised uh, version 06. And um, looking it over, I think we're going to want a confirmational uh, working group last call after, uh, uh, and, and after some more looking at it, um, we may want to resolve uh, some things, which I'll talk about today. Uh, but then, you know, we're, we're going to give, I think we're going to give folks a little more time to look at this and, and make sure that, that all the many comments, the first working group last call uh, precipitated have been uh, resolved. So thanks. Uh, and, the, and we have a main uh, topic to talk about there too, the status of that document. So then uh, proposals keep coming. Uh, we're, we're trying to make way for new work here, I think. And uh, with, with all the drafts we've, we've talked about uh, just before, uh, and we did, opt, we did adopt new work, as I mentioned, the uh, multiple uh, loss rate uh, search, uh, which is part of our working group documents now. Um, most, but most of the proposals are very familiar to us. So we, we should probably try to make some, some uh, uh, adoptions, let's say, let's say, you know, ones that, um, Working group drafts or, or individual drafts that are, are really receiving attention from the working group, uh, we, can, we can probably consider them for as strong candidates for adoption. All right, so on the milestones, uh, we're a little bit behind on a few things here, uh, but um, I think we can, we can resolve uh, uh, quite a few of these uh, fairly quickly and, and early this year. And then uh, we'll be we'll be in a position to update others, uh, add some more, um, maybe maybe drop a few of these where we don't see any progress, and, and that's a, a topic for the the chairs to deal with. So, any questions on the working group status? I, I see we've got some stuff in the chat here. Oh, good afternoon. Oh, all right. <laughs> Sorry, Rob. <laughs> that was probably a half hour ago. All right. Let's go back up here. Good. All right. So um, I, you know, I think this was shared with the working group, but, but just in case it wasn't, 
I'm, I'm, I'm back showing a slide here titled uh, Transport Area and Area Director, Transport Area Director Review of the back-to-back uh, -back frame uh, benchmarking uh, update uh, draft. So um, we, we had exactly one sentence in uh, the draft and uh, it drew upon uh, the guidance from RFC 2544, uh, which specified a simple waiting time for the device under test queues to empty uh, after the uh, tran transmitted load uh, ceased at the, uh, at the end of a trial. And that time, uh, traditionally and uh, for, for many years, has been sufficient at uh, two seconds. So we, we got a transport area review of the back-to-back -back frame draft, uh, which basically pointed out that uh, the, the, the buffer sizes in our devices under test today could be very much uh, longer than the tight longer than the buffer lengths we've tested in the past. Um, they could be uh, one and a half seconds long, and uh, they could be what the transport area calls uh, buffer bloat size buffers. And uh, anything, you know, anything in the one second realm, one second, two seconds, you know, whatever it happens to be, if you're, if you're, um, if you're sending with a high enough rate to fill the buffers of the device under test, then uh, the implication is that you likely have to wait uh, longer than two seconds and to be safe, you might have to wait uh, 30 seconds or, or more uh, for all frames to exit the device under test. You know, I kind of found, found that to be a bit shocking, but um, uh, this was the advice that we got. And um, you know, I have to say that that once this discussion got rolling, uh, our our old uh, friend and uh, chairman emeritus uh, Scott Bradner weighed in on on the topic, and uh, helped to clarify it. And and um, you know, we all basically recognized, especially you know, it took some time for me to recognize uh, what what exact components uh, we needed to nail down in order to express this clearly. Um, Especially because you know the, the in fact the buffer sizes that I've been uh, benchmarking recently are very very much smaller than anything that would call be called uh, buffer bloat. We're working in the uh, microsecond range. Uh, let's put it that way, and and that's why it's important to have the correction factors that we uh, that we have here and 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 so forth. It's a uh, uh, Good, it's been a good use of, of, this, uh, of this draft. So here's where we ended up with, with uh, text, um, and it's a lot more than one second, second uh, I'm sorry, it's a lot more than one sentence now, as, as, as you can see. So in the section on uh, the test for a single frame size, uh, each trial in the test, this is where you're trying to find the longest burst of frames that will pass through uh, loss-free. So each trial, uh, requires the tester to send a burst of frames and uh, with the minimum inner frame gap and we count the corresponding frames uh, forwarded by the dot or looking for zero loss. So uh, the duration of the trial includes three required components and this is this is the text we agreed on and IESG approved. Uh, so the the first component is the time to send the burst of frames the second component is the time to receive the transferred uh, burst of frames. And, and this, of course, might overlap uh, the first component in time. And then a third component of time, at least two seconds, not overlapping the time to receive the burst in, in two, and to ensure that the duff, dut buffers have depleted. So longer times must be used when conditions warrant, such as when buffer times are greater than two seconds and, uh, and are measured, and, or when the uh, burst sending times are, are greater than two seconds. So uh, care is needed uh, since this uh, time component directly increases the trial duration, and uh, many trials and tests uh, comprise a, a complete benchmarking study. So we can't really just in, you know, in, increase 
this waiting time uh, without uh, an overall time penalty. And uh, those of us who've been, you know, testing and testing and testing and waiting for results to show up, uh, you know, this uh, the 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 waiting time after a trial has a direct impact. So it's a balance to strike, and and I think we've got some wording here now that uh, uh, that does that. So um, and we also mentioned uh, the upper limit uh, for the for the time to send each burst uh, must be configurable uh, to values as high as thirty seconds. Uh, the buffer time results reported at or near the upper limit are likely invalid. Uh, we saw some of that in the um, uh, open platform for NFV uh, benchmarking uh, testing, where um, uh, basically the at the at the larger frame rates. Uh, the uh, packet forwarding rate was equal to the back-to-back -back, uh, frame at the large, uh, for the large frame sizes, and and that means you don't um, you don't accumulate a buffer or a queue, and uh, you you basically uh, you basically send and send and send, and then you report this maximum configured uh, time and and buffer length. Um, uh, the 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 resolution for that is something else we've attacked in this draft, where we have the the RFC 2544 throughput tests uh, take place first, and then any any tests where the frame size yields a um, uh, the maximum theoretical uh, frame rate, then uh, you don't test that for uh, for back to back frame benchmark and the and the uh, the attempt to infer the buffer time. So, I've talked a lot. Any uh, any questions or comments about that? No. All right. Well, this may this this may very well impact our um, our future uh, drafts because we're likely to get you know sort of the same uh, transport area comment. Uh, regarding buffer bloat sizes, and, uh, and and we have to be ready for it, and um, uh, that's why I share this experience. Maybe we can head that one off at the pass in the uh, in our in our future work where this is relevant. Okay, so that's the chairman's status, and um, let's let's check out our agenda here quickly. So our, our next topic is the uh, is the EVPN uh, draft status, and uh, Sarah, I'll give you another opportunity here to explain uh, uh, what happened and where we are. Thank you. Sarah. All right. Um, could someone confirm that I'm still being heard? Uh, yes, you are. Okay. Yes, you. Okay, good. Thank you. All right. Well, then um, I'll, I'll cover this this quickly. Uh, as I said, we had a good uh, good couple of reviews. And uh, this is now in working group last call. I think the last day is March uh, 23rd. So that covers our, um, our, our, our responsibilities here. And um, we'll, we'll move this along. And again, thanks to everyone, uh, Brian and, and Sadine, who uh, uh, helped get the draft to 07. Much appreciated. All right. So then, um, Brian, um, I've got your... Uh, next generation firewall benchmarking draft uh, queued up here next. So I'll Great. bring up the slides and I will try to do something here with, uh, uh, with the screen to make them maximally visible. Okay. All right. Just go to, just go to the uh, second slide. Got it. All right. Um, so uh, just jumping right in. Uh, as Al indicated, we received um, a boatload of uh, comments and uh, suggestions. Uh, 
our count estimates that it was like well over 70. Um, a significant number of them were uh, requests for clarification and uh, grammatical changes. If you do a diff um, between uh, five and uh, six, you'll you'll see uh, you know what was changed in uh, in this area. Um, the rest of this is going to be sort of going over what we consider to be the uh, significant uh, changes. So in examination of uh, the intent of the draft and uh, and the additions of uh, the security effectiveness uh, section to include network IPS, we changed the target of the draft from next generation firewalls to uh, network uh, security uh, devices. Um, Al brought to our attention um, early on in the review process uh, that we need to, needed to consider whether or not this uh, uh, supersedes RFC 3511. We did some had some internal discussions and uh, reviewed it, and we do believe that uh, this this draft should supersede uh, 3511. And we had uh, text in the uh, beginning of the draft explaining explaining why. And uh, under the test bed setup of section four, um, we uh, modif modified that somewhat to uh, reference section three of RFC 6815 in order to uh, avoid uh, reinventing the, the wheel. And again, that was a, a suggestion from uh, one of the reviewers. We clarified the security definitions um, uh, uh, in, contained in section 4.2, uh, table three. It's a pretty uh, significant rewrite just to uh, make it a lot clearer and uh, to sort of bring some sort of um, commonality to the, to the language used uh, in to line up with other uh, uh, definitions uh, used elsewhere. Then we totally, we did a significant rewrite of section 6.3, which was originally just uh, KP, the KPI section. Um, we changed the name to benchmarks and KPIs, and the goal was to uh, clarify and eliminate any of the ambiguities that existed, and there were a, there were a number of them. And uh, we used um, RFC 2647 definitions where it was um, where it was applicable, and it um, it was applicable in a number of cases. I think uh, three or four of them in uh, in the section. So those are the terms and definitions. Um, just to give folks a little background here, who might be new to this, those are the terms and, and definitions uh, that supported RFC uh, 3511. Uh, there were, you know, there was a time when we traditionally wrote our our terms uh, in a terminology draft, um, you know, where the definitions also appeared, and then the methodology was a separate draft, and that dates all the way back to the very first pair of drafts uh, that came out of uh, uh, the benchmarking methodology working group. So uh, it, it's it's really good that you're, you know. Uh, getting uh, some consistency with those terms. Um, Brian, I, I, since you've got a lot of good items on this uh, particular slide here, uh, I'd, I'd like to interrupt and, and maybe we can hold some of the discussion that we uh, had planned um, just so that we can um, uh, close on a few items. How, how many, sure. by the way, how many slides have you got here? Just one more after this. Oh, all right, then this is, uh, let me take a quick look at it. All right, so th there's more changes there. All right, so we'll, we'll so let's handle this uh, set of changes first. All right, so so does, you know, I'm, I forgot to check this. Does this mean that the, uh, that the title of the, of the document has uh, changed now? Which is yes, not a bad that was, thing. What, yeah, it, it, it does. It um, more accurately uh, reflects the scope of the uh, draft. Good, good. Because I, I, I suddenly, one, one day I suddenly began to wonder, um, uh, well, what do they mean by next generation? You know, are, are we are we we're really talking about the modern generation of firewalls, the ones that are here now, and and um, uh, and and this is a less a much less ambiguous title. So uh, thanks for thanks for going there with that uh, change. Yeah, that's that's good as well. Um, Does that mean that the file the the um the file names um should change as well then going forward? Um, because currently embedded in the file is NGFW, of course. Um, should no. we change that? To 
No, absolutely not. Let's let's um, let's 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 not do that. In fact, okay, that's there, fine. There are there there are ways to track that fairly automatically now, uh, but um, it, it's absolutely not necessary. Uh, given At this that, point, yeah. No, I get yeah. it. Yep, that's fine. All right. So then, um, so so we so we've got that change, and then uh, we've got another uh, uh, topic here. Uh, the, the the author proposal, since we brought this up, is uh, to uh, have this draft uh, supersede RFC uh, thirty five eleven, which is the uh, you know the, the roughly fifteen year old uh, benchmarking uh, methodology for uh, firewalls. Um, so uh, it, what we what we what we need to discuss is is um, whether the working group agrees with that. And then we also have to uh, sync it up with uh, the IETF terminology, where um, uh, supersede is, is kind of in the middle between where we we, we would might call update, um, and 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 of course there's a you know there's a million definitions for what what constitutes an update in in uh, in IETF. I think there's some good ones out there, and they may have even tried to standardize a few, but um, but the but the obsolete uh, definition is is fairly clear, and and I think that's what you meant with with. Al? I think we lost Al. Uh oh. Yep. I now the interesting part is how long it takes him to realize it. Yeah. <laughs> Let me see if I can pull down the materials as well. Al, did you hit did you hit mute by accident maybe? <laughs> although, although maybe I didn't hit it, and um, and something else happened, but now it looks like I'm 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 back, and the screen is visible as well. No, no. I don't see you sharing. Oh, okay. All right. Let's try that again. Presentation view. Uh, okay. Yeah, it looks like it completely reset my um, my uh, settings here. So let's go with uh, entire screen again. Allow. And now it looks like it's going. All right. You don't run solar winds, do you? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks like there was a um, there was a bobble here that uh, caused me to drop maybe momentarily enough to lose everything. So let's continue forward. Um, I, I I assume that somewhere in this. Uh, uh, discussion of supersedes. I, I was basically trying to get the answer to the question: uh, Do you think supersedes means to make RFC thirty-five eleven RF uh, obsolete? That is our uh, our sense of things. When we reviewed thirty-five eleven and uh, compared it with where the state of uh, the uh, of the technologies were today, um, uh, compared to uh, what we're uh, Looking to achieve with uh, with this draft, uh, we we felt that uh, that the changes were significant enough that it would supersede thirty five eleven. Okay, all right. So so it, then it sounds like in in our IETF terminology that would we would need to update the header uh, to say that uh, uh, that this uh, sort of the status obsoletes uh, RFC thirty five eleven. Uh, that's going to have to go into the abstract, and uh, we'll have to edit the uh, that intro paragraph right at the end, the last sentence, uh, to use the yeah. terminology. Yeah, we, obsolete. If, if we, we did, we obsolete. did update the uh, the introduction uh, paragraph uh, right at the end. We 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 are now saying that it says um, uh, all these reasons yeah. have led to the creation of a new. Uh, Network security device benchmarking document, and this document supersedes 35. Right. So the so the key point, though, uh, Brian, 
is that we have to use the word obsolete or makes obsolete uh, okay. uh, RFC thirty five eleven, and that's okay. and that's if the and that's if the working group agrees on that. So um, understood. So uh, I, I'm gonna. I mean, it, it's a you know always an unofficial ask when we're in the uh, um, we're in the live meeting like this. But uh, are there are there any objections to obsoleting uh, or, or making obsolete RFC thirty five eleven in the context of uh, publishing uh, the, uh, the the draft that we're discussing now? Hi. Uh, <clears throat> speaking as a, a participant, when you say network security device, I think that spans a pretty enormous set of devices. Um, right. Clearly, next generation. <laughs> we can arm wrestle over next generation, but a firewall is pretty clearly in line, pretty clearing, uh, pr pretty clearly transmitting and receiving. But there's a whole another set of devices that are just passive, and, and so they wouldn't even be doing that but they would absolutely call themselves a network security device. So the, the change in title, I was wondering if, if you could say more in, in, in specifically why go to such a generic term versus just shoring up your potential um, uh, confusion over, hey, next gen versus current or modern or, or what have you. Well, uh, it, and it's interesting, Sarah, I just put up on the screen here, uh, Bala has made a uh, comment uh, in which he says, uh, no change in the title. Uh, the title is Benchmarking Methodology uh, for uh, Network Security Device Performance was used in the previous version. I assume he means RC3511 as well. No, no, no. I mean, I mean, the, no? we, okay. have, we, we keep constantly. The previous version, I mean, no, 05. So. Oh, okay. 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 All so right. We, we have sure. the same same name, but we change the wording. Okay. And if you see the introduction, we, we, we just wrote. Okay, this draft not only for next generation firewall, it's so also for other security next generation security devices is applicable to benchmarking. Okay, all right. So let's do this. Um, so I'll I'll reread the current draft, <clears throat> but as it stands, as a participant it's going to take a lot to convince me that one draft is going to cover benchmarking the passive and the active devices because I absolutely wouldn't expect that. Um, open to being surprised, uh, but highly skeptical. And again, if you are really going after... Uh, <laughs> if you're really going after a firewall, I see it even in the abstract now. It's 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 got the NGIDS and IPS, which is an interesting term, but I, 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 I'm just saying, hey, as a participant, I, you're, it's going to take a lot to convince me that that's the right approach to take. Um, I definitely wouldn't test my IDS the same way I would a firewall. That, that's not instinctively how it comes across. So I will reread it with a fine, finer tooth comb uh, and circle back with feedback, just proactively giving you the, hey, I think taking on such a generic, broad, wide term um, is, is, is going to be, it feels like a tough sell. So, okay, fair enough. Um, given given that, and given that you know what we've developed here, um, in in our collect uh, in our opinion, goes way beyond the scope of just the next generation firewall. Um, and uh, you know, we have moved all of the, all the security effectiveness uh, stuff regarding next generation firewalls and next generations IPX down to an appendix, and clearly focused on performance testing aspects of things. You know, we, we, we think that it would um, definitely lend itself to, you know, next generation firewalls, next generation IPSs, where that firewalls, you know, anything that any pro network security um, device that is handles, um, you know, traffic and makes a security decision based on that. Um, if if you if you agree with that statement, and that, that's an assumption on my part, um, if you agree with that statement, then how should we um, change the title of the document that to more fit with what your thinking is? <clears throat> then, a you didn't mention IDS, which is a really good example. So pulling that I think helps. Um, 
but so can I defer to answer that? I mean, knee jerk, what I would sure. say is, hey, benchmarking firewalls or whatever we're going to call on GFW uh, and then IPSs makes lots of sense. Um, but let me reread it again uh, and come back with that question in the back of my mind, and I'll circle back on the list uh, to give you some feedback. So, so one of one of the things we're wanting to avoid is have a test lab decide that they want to use this draft to do testing, and uh, they say, well, we can use it in the web app firewall space from the performance requirements aspect of things, and then have a, a WAF vendor say, yeah, but it's not meant for WAFs because in the title it says such and such. So, mm -hmm. I mean, we're trying to avoid that. Mm -hmm. I understand. Like okay. I, I, I would say the same thing though. Let me um, reread it again with your question in mind and, and, and the objection you're trying to avoid. And let me see mm -hmm. if I can come back with some reasonable, um, <laughs> if I'm going to say no, let me see if I can come back with some proposals that might make sense. Yeah, thanks a lot, Sarah. That's, I appreciate that. Oh, thank you. Very good. So, um, I, I, so I, I didn't hear any objections to uh, making 3511 obsolete, but it, but it sounds like we've got a little more discussion to to uh, undertake anyway. Um, but in the but in the next um, in the next draft, let's try that. Let's try the uh, let's that the you know that the working group looks at let's uh, let's try that as a obsolete uh, 3511 and 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 see what the uh, reactions are because uh, that's something that's definitely got to be um, you know uh, confirmed on the mailing list at the very least all right so then um, one other one one other topic that uh, came to me in in, in my review uh, Brian Bala and, and Karsten uh, by the way, you know, thanks so much for taking on 70 comments, and and I'm sure that was really onerous uh, toward the end of the process. Here, we're really making good progress of toward clarification and and uh, moving this up to the next step. Um, yeah, Bella didn't sleep much. <laughs> no, no, and 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 I and I I know exactly where you're living, Bala. I got I got I've got the same uh, same situation on my hands elsewhere. <laughs> Uh, so let's uh, let's let's look at this. It's the uh, uh, the rewrite of uh, section six point three. Uh, that's the benchmarks and and uh, and KPIs. And and when I when I went through that, I I fairly I fairly quickly noticed that the term. Uh, let's see. So here's the procedures. Here's the tests. Here it is. So we 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 still got the term throughput. And um, in benchmarking methodology working group, we we've got a pretty solid definition of throughput right now, but it doesn't come from 2647. In fact, um, what you'll quickly see here is that the term the term throughput it, it it's not defined in 2647 and i think if if and if you're really if, if we're talking about um uh tcp or or other uh uh you know reliable transport layer traffic then i think we're talking about where is it i think it's it's good put yeah The number of bits per unit time forwarded to the correct destination interface uh, minus any lost or transmitted. So, um, Al, Al, yeah, I think I, um, all of the, I think universally, uh, I'm probably sticking my neck out a little bit when I say universally, but a significant majority of the security product vendors didn't like us using good put. Ouch. Yeah, so. Um, it, it, do you do you mean do you mean reliable transport protocol throughput or or specifically um, I mean I, I I wouldn't see I wouldn't want to add an adjective here like TCP throughput because you know pretty quickly people are going to want to talk about uh, reliable transport 
uh, throughput, which is based on um, UDP and Quick. Right. And, um, and and that was one of the other things that kind of was bouncing around in my mind when we were talking about next generation firewalls as well. And, and you're just throwing that terminology out. So, um, uh, you know, we, 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 need to, we need to be sure the vendors understand that uh, the benchmarking methodology working group has already claimed this term. Okay. And uh, okay, so, if we need, yeah, that makes sense. If we need, so all, all I was, all I was going to say is if we need to, let me back up. If we need to, um, if we need to explain what happened. Oh, this is yeah. Wait, and then this one. If we if we need to call this good put, but then but then make some explanatory statement later about um, you know the, the devices in the marketplace sometimes call this uh, throughput, uh, but it's different from the RFC twenty five forty four throughput, and you know on and on and and uh, and, and and so forth. Then you know that that might get us to a compromise, but we we but we can't leave. I don't think we we can leave uh, a bare throughput here and, and have it be different than twenty five forty four. So, just uh, Vratko just made a comment um, saying that throughput is now defined in seven point one point three point four. Um, maybe let's just scroll down to that one and see you know, right. perhaps it's, we can use the wording there and then um i i'm not not uh entirely sure is, is there a reason we can't use the bmwg defined uh i'm there i i if we're going to be taking it and taking the input from the BMWG, which I think we we would be fools not to, um, uh, back to um, our our internal working groups. I just want to make sure we have a very clear um, explanation as to uh, where where the recommendation is coming from and why. I just want to clarify why it's not possible to measure RFC twenty five forty four for for firewall benchmarking test. Two reasons. First. RS2 2544, you explain frame per second, frame rate, not the bit per second. For stateful firewall, this is important. The, the payload is very important, not, not the frame per second. So that's why uh, I, I think RS2 2544 is mentioning frame per second. But I think for the stateful firewall, we have to measure bit per bit rate. Because the firewalls taking take a look, taking a look on the bits and packets, payloads. So it's important to show the bit rate than um, frame rate. So that's yeah, one Bob, point. The second point, well, let me, let me, well, let me uh, one yeah, thing. The yeah, second yeah, go, ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Bala, but this, I'm going to circle back to that first one. Please go ahead, yeah. I'm sorry. The second point is the RSC 2544 says, okay, so the, the, you measure the throughput with, with zero packet loss, right? But you, as you know, this is layer seven, there's a retransmission TCP, and you of course you will see packet loss and then you have a retransmission this is slightly different than state for stateless firewall or the layer three layer two device testing so this is a little bit slightly different than 2544 test throughput test uh yeah i'm not arguing that um i'm uh, and uh, but i'll uh, but i will say that uh the rfc 2544 throughput is used commonly also at the the packet layer uh, but the results can be expressed in bits per second. That's where we compare it with, uh, you know, the maximum theoretical bit rates and frame rates and, and so forth. Um, we, uh, we 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 just have to we just have to put the right story together here so that we don't have, uh, you know, this overlapping uh, single term, which uh, looks a lot like RFC uh, twenty five forty four throughput. And um, you know, if, if you're saying that that this is a uh, you know kind of a layer four and above uh, throughput, a transport layer throughput, uh, then then that's fine. But 
it doesn't say that here. Yeah, I think the only only the problem is if you see the throughput, the RFC twenty six forty so explaining not the throughput is explaining uh, bit per seconds. So we just take the same definition. The only the problem is if we change the title. Okay, there you see bit per seconds as a KPI, but in, in our draft you see throughput. But and 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 so that's the that's the problem I'm trying to fix. We we can't say throughput alone here. We've already got that term claimed, mm -hmm. and and it's a different definition. Yep, you of course want consistency. Yeah, and and so that's why I'm pointing to uh, if you're if you're thinking good put. And, and that's what you just explained, uh, Bala, with retransmissions and losses that are, are, are taken care of. Um, you know, that's fine. And that's a term that was used in RFC 3511, the previous firewall benchmarking RFC. But that's, it. so I, it, it sounds to me as though, and, and of course you can express good put in bits per second. But it, but it sounds to me as though you really want to sit, take a step back, sit down, and decide what you what you're really measuring here. Yes, sir, we will. We need to talk internally. The only the problem is good good put. You have to eliminate all retrans. So we are, we are talking here stateful traffic, right? So mostly TCP. So if you want to measure good put, you need to eliminate all retransmission, retries, and everything. And the point is that the system is complex. The, not only the, the, the test and the device, only the, the, the test devices, test equipment. That we need to cl clarify, make sure, okay, who is dropping packet or who is making retransmission and all kinds of things we need to eliminate in order to measure the good put. So good put is the, the, the traffic rate without any retransmission uh, delays and anything. Well, it, it takes advantage of retransmissions. Right. So I think this is covered in 8238 definition of application good put. But I would like to think about the, the majority of the readers. What is the target audience? So, of course, now somebody is calling me. Uh, the target audience. And the target audience is just the orderly guy <laughs> or, 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 or girl who just has an understanding, an informal understanding of throughput. So the question is, isn't it possible to overload the term here for the purpose of this layer 7 related document? If, if, we, if, we, if we put enough adjectives in front of it, Karsten, then we've got something to talk about. Um, OK. In other words. That, that would be an idea to say application throughput. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then use that term consistently throughout the document. Right. Because the other thing is, I mean, the term throughput has been used a lot, you know, but I'm I'm actually not sure where is the official definition that would be, whether that would claim to be valid across all BMW G documents. It's in um, well, it, it's the definition is in two places. Uh, actually, three places. Actually, four places. <laughs> it's in RFC 1242, 1242. It is in uh, 1944. Uh, that's the original version of, of 2544. And, it, and actually, the wording is correct in 1944 uh, because something went wrong in the editing process. Uh, and the definition in uh, 2544 is missing some words. And so the fourth and final place where the definition exists is in the errata for uh, RFC 2544, where I pointed out that something went wrong in the editing process and the full definition is also for RFC 2544 is in the errata. That for, this is all for 25, uh, RFC 2544 throughput. 
So yeah, there's a long history here. We're carrying some baggage. Um, uh, a lot of it, you know, a lot of this took place before I got very active here in, in, in 2003. Uh, but I, but I'm responsible for noticing the mistake and, and entering the errata. I'll, I'll take credit for that. Uh, nevertheless, um, we, you know, we've, in, in our context, um, and, and, and this is a standard as much as anything in, in our, in our industry, uh, this is, this is the definition we use. You know, there, there, there are surely, there are lots of other ways to uh, define this, but within our working group, we've got a good solid foundation to stand on. And, and if we, if we get close to that, um, uh, with another term, let's let's clarify it with a, with at least one really uh, useful adjective. I think that would be a good way to go. So uh, 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 I'll I'll Karsten uh, uh, Bala Ryan, if I can add, it's magic here. I think this work. Uh, first, firstly, thanks very much for for driving it. As I said in my um, uh, email, uh, excellent work, uh, and I think this is an opportunity for us to actually. Uh, uh, standardize on nomenclature exactly as, as, as uh, Karsten you said, because uh, making it complicated for the uh, for the for the users uh, is not going to help uh, anybody. Um, and uh, uh, just a, a quick example in the in the normal you know packet blasting uh, tests, um, uh, we use in our in our tests uh, the, the RFC two five four four nomenclature, but but we we quote throughput in uh, in bits per second and also in packets per second. Uh, here we're clearly dealing with the stateful uh, traffic, um, so we are after something related to transactions and transaction throughput, and we have transactions per seconds, um, and we have uh, you know connections per seconds and, and other metrics. So um, it would be good to use this. It's, it's an excellent opportunity to actually look at at uh, at uh, defining this uh, uh, term uh, well, so that there is no no ambiguity for stateful uh, uh, traffic. And uh, the, the, uh, the only issue here is that independently on what functions are performed on the, on the packet flows, there will be quite huge dependencies on the, not only the packet size, but also the protocols used, right? Whether it's TCP, IP, QUIC, and, um, and, uh, and, and, and so on. So there will be always a number of, I think, adjectives plus uh, protocols or, or some other uh, metadata associated with the, with the performance metric word, whether it's throughput or, or, or transaction throughput or something. But it will be good to have that clarified here. And I think this is, this is exactly the place, uh, this draft. So that's good. Good, good. thank you, Masiak. I, I, I think that's a, that's a decent summary of, um, what we've talked about and, and, and the next steps. And anything further on this topic? It's, it's an important one, obviously, um, to the working group and, and, and to the world at large. Um, I would like to point to two parts of this definition, which are not included, in, to my knowledge, in any other throughput definition. The first one is the word allowed. So for security devices, there is a difference between traffic that could be forwarded and traffic that's allowed. Okay, maybe that's not so much a, a problem. The other problem is the correct destination interface. So in load balancing or any other kind of layer seven device, uh, it's important that the traffic doesn't just arrive, but that it's, it's actually forwarded on the correct output uh, port, egress port. Good, those, those are, those are, those oh, are great points. <laughs> the question is, you know, do you, would you suggest Al or anybody to, to reference a definition of throughput and then supplement it as we've tried here? Or should we just ignore the differences in the, defini in the definition and say we, we say whether it's allowed traffic or not is okay, whether it arrives at the correct e port or not, okay? Or, or what should we do? Or define something completely different? Well, uh, throughput, which is the firewall throughput. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, so, uh, so uh, and, actually, and we've, uh, got the, another... we've, we've got, the, we've got the terms correct desti destination here in the old uh, good put, uh, definition. So that's, uh, that's, a, that's a good start. And then, um, 
you know, you 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 have to you, you basically have to uh, uh, decide where in the you know where in the stack uh, this definition is it going to exist at what layer. You have to nail that down, and um, uh, and and I you know I think your point about allowed permitted traffic. Uh, this is the you know that that picks up the aspect of um, you know the firewall operation, where it's going to be tossing away uh, traffic potentially while you're um, trying to forward uh, allowed traffic. So those are, and those are the kinds of tests that people are interested in. So uh, I'm yeah, sorry, uh, that was, I think that was Masiak trying to get in yeah, here too. Yeah, yeah. so uh, Carson just stimulated my, my, uh, uh, my, my thinking uh, here. Uh, the, you know, clearly as expressed earlier, um, I think it was either Bala or Brian, uh, we're dealing here with uh, quite complex um, uh, packet processing functions uh, deployed on those on those uh, devices or, or appliances so the um, uh, and I, I think I mentioned this in my my comments but I didn't really get to the bottom of it because I, I clearly ran out of time um, so the the presence or not of CVEs which is very well handled in the draft so the throughput or you know we were actually measuring performance here and this performance of you know clean traffic and also performance under um, under attack, right? With with AVCs, um, with CVEs there, so uh, there, there will be a CVE dependency. And Carson, as you said, um, you know, is is what what does matter? The permit throughput, um, and and the deny actions are are ignored. Um, I mean, they all they all matter. Um, so so somehow uh, the the uh, performance slash efficiency. Uh, definition should capture that we're dealing with the security devices that are filtering the good from bad um, and and the definition should capture that somehow this is not just you know dropping packet uh, due to the capacity issue it's not the only uh, 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 action that we measuring here we're actually measuring the response to the um, uh, the, the malicious traffic Yeah, so there's that, that's very good. So there's 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 absolutely some aspects of this definition that are unique uh, that we want to retain, and that we want to differentiate from the RFC twenty five forty four throughput in all right. definition in in all of its forms. I, I think that's the uh, that's the summary of where we are at the moment. So in order to avoid avoid us sort of like us meaning like the folks from the NetSec open side and the folks from the MWG side going back and forth on this. Um, I'm wondering whether it would be useful to have a, uh, a call with a small group of people. So like I'm thinking Mashek and maybe uh, someone else or a couple of others from uh, the benchmark working group side who's interested and then some front folks from the NetSec open side. So we could just nail this and uh, sort of get get something where we all agree and then we'll put it you know write up um, a, a draft definition circulate it amongst everybody and get everybody to bless it and then put it in the document i think that might be a more efficient way of doing it yeah i mean i i don't think it i, I don't think we we need a interim meeting for that necessarily um as long as everybody as long as any, everybody from BMWG who's interested is is uh, allowed to attend. Um, oh yeah, no, there would be no there would be no uh, limitation if somebody somebody wanted to attend. It's great, but you know as well as I do that the smaller the number, the more effective uh, the results will be. Yeah, yeah. So, but I, I, you know, I'm 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 just trying to avoid the overhead of of an of an interim meeting when we're basically going to be talking about one definition. <laughs> And and I think that's and I think that's fairly reasonable. It's you know it, it's yep. really just a, no, a bunch of knowledgeable people getting together, uh, uh, each each side uh, of perspectives, uh, expressing their views, and and then uh, and then as you say, Brian, nail it. That's you know go go away and get it right. That's what we're talking about here. Basically, yeah. So so that's I, I think that's I think that's a good a good a good way forward on uh, on this. Uh, does anybody have any objection to proceeding in that way to, to have an informal call at a reasonable hour where 
um, you know, where, where we hope anyone who has a strong interest in this topic. And, and basically, there were five of us who spoke up today, uh, six uh, on, on all the topics of this draft, uh, but plenty of people who've made comments along the way and might want to join us. So, it, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a small but very interested group. And, and I think that would keep in keep within the manageable size. And then, of course, any you know any preliminary agreement is going to be reported back to the group, both in the context of uh, like a like an email status and updated words to the draft, and then working group review that follows. So it's yeah. it's um, um, you know nothing's going to happen here without um, full uh, access to the information. Just looking for the brain trust to weigh in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I have to confess, it will be very helpful for me to hear additional perspectives too. And I hope everyone is open to the, that uh, that opportunity. I think yeah, Robert sense. raised his hand. Al, I think Robert raised his hand for. Oh, we did. Okay, I, I've got stuff covered up here. Uh, uh, go, Robert. Um, Yes, yeah, so, so uh, obviously I don't know this technology very well, but I, I do want to share the fact that the comments that I think a couple of you are making of um, this should be a different term, as in at least it should have some adjective to describe the throughput is different. I think that is key. Um, and although it's hard to speak for what the ISG would do during review, I suspect that if you try to re redefine throughput in this document to have a different meaning, I suspect that that would... Um, cause angst within the ISG review. So um, it doesn't have to be a completely different word, but at least uh, making sure that it is quite clearly different, I think would be a good thing to achieve. Uh, having a meeting to discuss this going forward, that's not like a good, idea to, a good idea to me, but just to raise that. That that's that, that's good. That sounds that sounds supportive of the general direction we're going and and also um, you know, as a reminder to everyone, uh, which is something which Rob is, is very familiar with, uh, you know, the, the IESG sometimes has uh, uh, people on the, the committee that uh, on the group um, who've done a, lot, done a significant amount of benchmarking. And, and, and from that experience, they go, oh, what the hell are you guys doing here? <laughs> so, uh, you know, we're, we're, our work is often looked, on, looked in on uh, at the very last stage uh, by very knowledgeable people and um, uh, performance measurement experts and, and so forth who only get to weigh in at that point. And, um, you know, we have to be ready to defend what we what we decide. Uh, well, that so, o that o only serves to help make the final result better. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Good. All right, um, so Brian, you've got, uh, I think that was the last one on this one. You've got a few more uh, uh, topics on, on this uh, highlight of changes here. So, uh, yeah. I, you know, I think, so, good. Please so go the, cha the cha changes to uh, the actual test cases, uh, 7.1 through 7.9, uh, basic intent and uh, process was unchanged. You know, any anything that we changed there were for clarity's sake. Uh, we added the IANA uh, considerations um, text that uh, wasn't wasn't in, in Section 8 previously. And then we added the uh, associated RFCs that we referenced to uh, uh, Section 12.2, the informative references. And then we moved, um, we moved uh, the DUT and SUT uh, classifications um, that uh, we previously had in Section 4 into Appendix B. And, and and so on because it wasn't applicable across the board, so it just made more sense to uh, to, to make it um, an appendix. Good. And that's and that's and that's pretty much it. I mean, if you take a look at diff diff two, you'll see all the, all the work that we did. So. Oh yeah, yeah, tons tons of work there, and and um, yeah. much appreciated. So. Yeah, and 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 I really, you know, speaking on behalf of um, all the folks on the NetSec Open side that that have worked on this, the input that we've received and that we anticipate receiving going forward is great, and um, I, I think it will really, really in the long term, uh, work out that we'll have a much more solid document that I think will survive uh, the test of time. Great. 
Well, I'm, I'm glad the, the NETSEC open community uh, who has contributed so much to this is, is uh, also uh, open to the, um, uh, the wider review here. That's, that's what we've been trying to get going all along. And um, as, as far as the next steps go, we've got, the, uh, we've, we've got Sarah's review. Uh, we've got um, the, to, to work on, on throughput uh, definition with an adjective, uh, the something something throughput. And we've uh, got to get uh, some additional review uh, by by folks. If if you uh, if if any interest has been piqued today by uh, by these discussions and and the topics, uh, because this is a um, uh, and we're going to nail down that uh, obsolete part of it too. So, yeah. Um, so I, yeah. I, I, I think if, if if anybody you know. Al, I'm assuming you're interested in in uh, being involved on on this uh, call, Matchek as well. I'm assuming. Um, but if anyone else is um, interested, uh, drop me an email. It's uh, bmunkman at netsecopen.org, and uh, we can uh, we can set that up. Yeah, please please drop uh, your email into the uh, into the chat, uh, Brian, and and that will help people uh, get that uh, right away. Yeah, I'll do that right now. Should I po should I post? Um, yeah, God, I hate I hate the idea of saying this, but should I, um, should I post? Um, to the uh, BNWG mailing list, um, an invite to the meeting, or is that just asking yeah. for? Yeah, 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 no, I think yeah. that's I think that's fine. I I I I think that that we should be open as possible, and I don't think we're yeah. going to get a uh, you know an a, a tremendous overage that would um, mess up our conference. <laughs> no, you're right. You're you're absolutely right. Being open and transparent as possible is the right way to do it. Uh, and, and so um, let's let's have those let's have those uh, steps that I've mentioned, um, and we'll uh, before the next draft is published, and then uh, when the next draft is published, then we'll do a working group last call, uh, which will hopefully finish it up. Hey Sarah, how long do you think it'll um, uh, take you to go through the the uh, fifty odd pages? Uh, I think it's a day per page, Brian. So, uh, can you give me a couple months? No, no. <laughs> um, <clears throat> can I have a? I will do it as soon as I can. I'll try to get to it this weekend. In all honesty, I was going to have somebody on my QA team here at work take a look as well because it's okay, something we great. About. So, um, you yep. know, if you can do a week formally, th that would be best. But I will do yep. my very best to get my review in this weekend. Oh, that's great. I mean, I, I that goes way above and beyond what I expected. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Um, Thank you. I, I, I'm sorry. Sorry, Sarah. I, I, I was just trying to recognize Masiek uh, in the queue. We've we've done a I've done a bad job of of uh, managing the mic line here today, <laughs> but uh, every I think everyone's been heard that wanted to be heard. Go ahead, Masiek. Yeah, sorry. So I, I also forgot to raise my hand earlier and I was barging in. So apologies for that. Now I'm uh, following the discipline in the mic line and I was waiting patiently. Thank you, Al. Um, I have, um, uh, I actually have uh, one or two uh, generic comments, if this is a good time, because we're going to leave this, uh, this, uh, this draft now, correct? Yeah, yeah. I think if you can, if you can just do that in five minutes, uh, that will be great. Uh, okay, so I, I will not be, uh, yeah, I am, uh, sometimes uh, taking time but uh, I'll, I'll keep it short so the um, uh, uh, one question I have is and I'm not sure I asked it in the in, in my review uh, this is about uh, security devices appliances but is the aim here also to address the virtualized or, or cloud-based security offerings we are um, starting to uh, look at that yes so do you think um, so it, it is the target for the draft Directly um, or well, tangentially. Um, I, mm -hmm. I'm not. Um, I'm. I'm. We're we're going into looking at this with a with a, an expectation that things might have to change. Um, that may lead to a requirement to have a to have a new draft, but um, or or a new a new RFC. But um, we haven't reached that point yet. When I said we're just starting to think about it, uh, I do mean just. Okay, so because if it does, then uh, this draft should be acting as a foundation, uh, right? At least that's my yeah. that's, yes. that's my thing. It's something to build on. There is a lot of new yes. 
network as a, as a service, this uh, marketing SASE things, uh, yeah. secure access, secure edge, and it, it network security generally became a much bigger thing than before due to COVID and the number of people yeah. um, uh, uh, living online. So. Uh, uh, work life and so on. So, okay, so the, thanks very much because uh, there's a direct impact there on sizing as uh, the current sizing, and I think I raised that, is is, is clearly focusing on, on physical appliances, but maybe that's something to keep in mind. The other one mm -hmm. um, is uh, the comment I, I, I made, and, and I guess I, I still need to finish the, the, the checking uh, because uh, and uh, because you actually did uh, um, address uh, most of most most of my comments so thank you very much for that I but there, there are a few uh, loose ends which I guess my questions or points were not um, uh, very uh, uh, specific or specific enough um, and that is the the features that uh, are recommended to be configured um, so um, I guess I will, I'm going to revisit this point and uh, and, and clarify fur further on what is the recommendation, a recommended versus optional, and and uh, and the use of the word you know should consistently uh, be enabled um, because IPS is always there and um, and uh, if people take that that this is the baseline that IPS is always there um, that excludes cases where IPS is not there. So. So, so, um, re, so the purpose, the purpose of our recommendations when it comes to the features being considered was not necessarily to test stringently the secure the effectiveness of these features. the The goal was to ensure that the features were enabled, that we verified that they are acting and running in a manner that we would expect. We being the testers would expect mm -hmm. and then um, leave them on during during the performance testing and um, so you know we're we're not we were not looking to make this um, a document that uh, was an exhaustive um, security efficacy test okay okay right. so uh, I guess I'm gonna revisit and reread that um, because that's not the, uh, and I guess I, I included this in my in my comments, uh, um, and and if there is any scope for for mentioning that you know some of those features or any of those features could be uh, tested in in isolation in terms of measuring their efficiency. But uh, let me think about that, and I'll come back to you with uh, with comments. I, un I understand that uh, there is time for uh, completing the review because I actually only skimmed through section seven one, which was good, but I would like to spend a bit more time on that. So, so uh, I understand that there is a time uh, uh, for that before the next uh, revision, or or is that not the case? Um, we welcome we welcome comments and um, suggestions. Um, uh, some things we as as evidenced by how we responded to your previous comments, there will be some that we think make a lot of sense and that we will change. Um, but with respect to the test cases, seven one through seven nine, um, you know, it's it's going to be a, a reasonably high bar that we'll need to um, discuss with you in order to uh, to make changes in, in that area if it's going to affect the tests themselves, the execution of the tests. I, I, I don't not, expect. I, I don't expect that because it, the content okay. is already, my you know, uh, the best thing I've ever seen uh, uh, written down. So, uh, but um, uh, okay, all right. Uh, but I get the point, uh, uh, Brian. So um, we'll uh, we'll do my best to turn it throughout as, as as soon as possible. Oh, great. Thank you. Great. Thanks a lot, Magic. Right. Okay. So we, we've, we've got our next steps. We've got a couple of additional comments. And um, uh, assuming all that's uh, been captured in the notes, we'll get it out to the mailing list very shortly. Uh, Brian, uh, Bala, Karsten, uh, thank you so much for your efforts again. Uh, like you said, thank you. <laughs> and uh, uh, we'll, we'll now move on to the next uh, topic, if that's OK. Actually, um, the next topic is um, is uh, the multi, oh gosh, multi multi loss ratio uh, search, and I want to make what do I want to do here? I want to make this bigger. And and I so so um, Masiek and and 
uh, Veratko. Uh, which one is it? Is it you, Masiek, who's going to present this, or Veratko? No, oh, oh Veratko's here. Yeah, oh. it's you, Veratko. Um, I, I, uh, I, I need to beg uh, a two-minute health break here. If you want, you can start um, start slowly, uh, but I will be right back. Okay. Okay, I think we can wait two minutes. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. So two minute health break, everybody. Okay, I'm I'm back, and it's uh, and if you, I guess if you start slowly, uh, Vratko, you will will pick up anyone who anyone else who needed a health break. Thank you for waiting. Okay, so hello, I'm Vratko Polak. I'm presenting an update on this draft. MR search means multiple loss ratio search, and uh, now I see that it is not mentioned anywhere in this presentation. So hopefully. Next meeting, it will be somewhere there. Uh, the draft status is the important thing. And uh, first of all, uh, the draft was ad adapted. That means that now it has different file name with a different uh, version number, but uh, otherwise uh, the contents has uh, not changed in any meaningful way. My plan was to prepare some changes uh, for this meeting, but I have uh, run out of time. So there are some changes, but there are not yet turned into the next version of the draft. They will be soon, but not just today. So uh, this presentation, I, I will be spending some time describing what the changes are and why I think they are needed. And of course, uh, we welcome more reviews. I think uh, we can jump uh, to the slide number seven. The slides in between are just uh, recycling the older presentations useful for people who are not there or are not familiar. We can go back if there are some specific questions, but uh, this is the important thing. So here I am describing a situation I have encountered where the old logic is uh, not very efficient. Uh, this leads uh, to the search uh, taking longer to, to give a final result. And uh, there is one number highlighted in red. It's uh, three lines, uh, third line from the bottom. Uh, this is too low because uh, there was a measurement done at 11, which when it is con considered, it will be clear that we, the algorithm does not need to measure this low. But the previous logic was short-sighted and didn't see this implication. So it was doing more measurements that were necessary. So this is like, uh, uh, this is a fake result. Uh, I do not have a real run with real numbers uh, to show this behavior, but uh, at least the numbers are easy, easier to follow. So we sure. can go to the next slide uh, where I describe uh, the improvements. Uh, initially, uh, my idea was to just uh, make the draft obviously uh, 
being able to support multiple uh, multiple loss ratio goals because uh, the currently it focuses on just two goals uh, one goal is exactly zero loss which leads to NDR no drop rate and the other one is some non-zero small ratio which leads to PDR partial drop rate uh, it is uh, obvious for me at least that uh, the previous logic can be uh, generalized to support any number of ratios but it wasn't not clear from the previous text how it should be generalized but uh, then I encountered uh, this one inefficiency so I endeavored to fix this inefficiency while doing the change from fixed to to configurable number of loss ratio goals and uh, the main change is uh, that contrary to the previous version I mean currently published version uh, there is no coupling between which measurement belongs to which ratio because in the external search this can change we have seen that previously measurement result that looks unrelated turned out to be related so the main change is that now there is quote unquote database that holds all the results at least for the particular measurement duration and uh, the the fact which of those uh, results are acting as upper bound or lower bound for a particular ratio is computed in the runtime after each new result so this way even old and it's uh, basically uh, we avoid the previous situation even measurements uh, that when they were done looked unrelated now they can become related based on this computation during runtime uh, there are some technicalities uh, for example uh, I am now introducing effective loss ratio this is to avoid false decisions uh, when measurement at higher rate leads to lower loss ratio because the intention is still to be conservative in the search so if uh, this so-called uh, ratio loss inversion happens we do not trust those lower loss ratios and we assume they are the same as the next uh, smaller rate and uh, this is the example yeah I think I have yeah there is a link uh, for the code uh, so that the people can check how exactly uh, the current logic looks like uh, I still do not have a good enough English description uh, how exactly does it look like mainly related to what happens uh, when you start new phase and you do not uh, have all the bounds at the current duration how do you use the results from the previous duration that is not yet put into the words correctly this is the thing uh, that I have already implemented in the code so it is there I just need to describe it in English so the next version is ready okay so this uh, next slide shows what happens with the new logic and you can see there is green number 11 this is what the new logic does it uh, realizes that previously unrelated measurement now works as a valid bound so the search ends more quickly and by the way it uh, gives a different result that is because of the the DOT is not behaving uh, deterministic uh, in a deterministic way but there is no easy way to deal with it with this framework I believe this is a good solution to have equally valid result even if it is different when the, this result comes sooner so I think uh, this is the, the important uh, change yeah yeah it'll it'll be it'll be interesting to see how how you um, how you handled the, the device as you put it the device under test 
uh, be performing in a non-deterministic uh, way with respect to increasing load. I mean, this is this is the problem. Uh, you know, we recognized uh, between um, physical devices where we're pretty much able to get rid of the uh, transient problems, um, and and then the uh, you know our virtualized versions of the same devices, where 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 transients come around and and they they are a necessary part of operation, but they they bother our uh, our, our our longer term searching, um, and and kind of give us a clue that the resource limitation answer is is below a certain load level, uh, when in fact uh, no that was just a transient that happened and and. Um, uh, the resource limitation is actually above here somewhere. Uh, we've, um, yeah. you know, we've, we've yeah. attacked that problem a couple of different ways now, I think, and it'll be interesting to see uh, what your solution is here. Thanks. Yeah, so uh, for this particular algorithm, uh, uh, my goal is to optimize uh, the search logic so the algorithm never finds uh, any inconsistencies and uh, thinks uh, everything is good. Uh, of course, uh, this does not happen because uh, the algorithm starts with shorter durations and then need to remeasure with longer durations. So here you can see uh, the PDR after five uh, measurement, five second measurements uh, was between 15 and 16 and then in 30 seconds it was forced to concede uh, it is lower. So this will always, well, this can always happen and uh, sometimes uh, this happens reliably. For example, if uh, there is some interrupt uh, that is periodic in time, uh, right. it may be uh, impossible for the 30 second measurement to not encounter uh, this uh, interrupt and uh, the previously good result, uh, which was lucky, now can never be achieved after uh, any repetitions uh, and so on. So this algorithm is prepared for this. Uh, the improvement is uh, that uh, things uh, only get uh, more stable within one specific phase. So uh, when we switch from five seconds to 30 seconds, uh, things can break, but they will not uh, break as badly as previously, because previously the search for PDR has uh, broken the previously stabilized search for NDR, which is the inefficiency we want to avoid. So with this new logic, we will avoid it, but uh, algorithm still needs to be prepared for the fact that DOT changes behavior just because we are using longer trial durations. Right. Right. Okay. And, and and, uh, yeah, there are some uh, future improvements. Basically, uh, I envision that after some months, uh, I will do another go at the algorithm to do some more improvements. Uh, one of them is uh, basically introduce back the improvement that I had in the code previously, but uh, now I have removed it to make the code more simple. Of course, I will need to test it whether it is still desirable, but I, I have a feeling that it will be desirable. That is uh, basically earlier phases can use larger interval width, so the next phase always start bisecting the previous interval because uh, this will never hurt and it will uh, save one bisection in the previous phase, so it always uh, saves time. So I think uh, it will be back. And uh, there are more possible improvements. Uh, uh, one is uh, uh, to make configurable external search. Uh, in my example, when uh, there was a failure and uh, the previously good bound is no longer valid, uh, the algorithm was doubling the interval search, but in practice, uh, this is uh, not the optimal way to do. Uh, we, for example, decided that quadrupling the interval width gives uh, better results because usually when you find out that the old bound no longer holds, the new bounds are not adjacent. Uh, there are several 
expansions away. So by e increasing the interval length more aggressively, we can spend uh, we can save some time on average. So uh, this will probably also get back. And finally, there is uneven splits. This is some information theory applied to this. If the current interval width is not a power of two, we can spend some time by not splitting evenly, but trying to get closer in to the power of two of the resulting intervals. For example, one to two split is the logical thing to do if you find yourself to be in three times your interval goal. So this will be another improvement on average. So I think it will be worth documenting in this in this next version. So I agree. There you go. So I just need to first finish documenting uh, the changes I have made for this meeting, and then after some time, implement the rest of the improvements and document them. So expect at least two more uh, draft versions. Well, well, that's that's great. I, I think you're headed down the right path for uh, several of these, uh, Vratko and, and Masiek and, and uh, uh, you know, just in my my opinion as a as a participant, this is getting better. I, I you know, I, I even encountered a, a case like the one you described with uh, you know the binary search with loss verification algorithm. We were a little bit aggressive on moving the limits around and and um, uh, had to fix one of those. And and you know, it only it only really it only really showed up because of uh, you know one kind of corner case of testing. So, uh, uh, but it, but it's good to get these things. Uh, 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 fixed before we uh, send them out in the world, so that's good. Uh, any any comments on the uh, on the draft or and or the future plans here? All right. Um, can we get some volunteers to uh, to review this as uh, uh, when when uh, Vratko and Ma Masiek um, make a new draft available? Okay. Well, um, we'll continue to push for uh, for reviewers on the mailing list, and um, and and thank you for your time and your your preparation today, uh, Vratko and Masiak. Much appreciated. Yeah. Thank you. And and congratulations on your. This is your first version of the working group draft. So uh, you know now's now's when the working group really has to start paying attention. Uh, that's that's with my working group chair's hat on. <laughs> yeah, congratulations. Uh, good call out, Al. All right. So, um, oh, Masiak, yes. Uh, yeah, just uh, Evratko, in case you haven't seen, Karsten asked the question on the on the chat, whether there is any a plan or an observation of MLR search used in other contexts than FDIO, which is where the code is being developed, and are there any other implementations on the horizon? Um, uh, Radko, do you want to take that, or do you want me to talk? Well, uh, there is uh, one version of a MLR search uh, library in Python available on PyPy, but uh, it is uh, uh, an older version. That's what we are currently using in CSIT. Basically, uh, in uh, FDIO, we do not have a good process to publish uh, different versions uh, as quickly as we are able to produce them. So we definitely want to improve on that. And uh, other than that, I am not aware of anybody else trying to implement uh, this algorithm. I think uh, everybody that I know of uh, is uh, using this Python library. Yeah. And, uh, and in terms of um... Uh, 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 in terms of uh, who is uh, using those, I know that the NFV bench guys um, uh, were using it at some point. I don't know what is the current situation. Um, I mean, inter interacting with Alec Hawthorne, so um, Al, you may you may know better the situation there. And um, 
uh, but in the context of FDIO, we do have, uh, but that's FDIO, uh, uh, Carson, um, answering a question. Um, we have uh, members of uh, Linux Foundation uh, Networking, where FDIO sits, um, together with OPNV and so on, and uh, we have uh, the, um, um, we have the uh, Intel and uh, ARM as at least two uh, 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 parties that are using uh, the MLR search, uh, but that is done in uh, with Syslet code. And uh, we we currently testing VBP and DPDK in FDIO. Uh, the other guys are testing, uh, you know, whatever they they uh, they develop uh, or, or or verify. I, I don't have a full visibility. The the main the main in case it is not clear for for folks, and I don't know to what degree we describe it in the in the draft um, uh, intro. The main goal here is to really uh, reduce the amount of time it takes to discover the rates um, and uh, and the target uh, environment or or, or deployment uh, uh, scenario is. Uh, automated test execution for for benchmarking uh, run by as part of the CI/CD system to verify the performance of you know physical appliances or or, or virtual appliances um, and apply this algorithm not only to packets per seconds or bits per second throughput but we also have applied it now to connections per seconds and um, and uh, and and stateful uh, uh, throughput let's put it this way. So we believe it is uh, quite universally uh, applicable as a uh, as alternative to a straightforward binary search. And with addition of the multi-rate support, one can now define um, uh, not only zero frame loss and some non-zero PLR, a uh, packet loss ratio, but uh, uh, but but more more rates if one desires. So hopefully this answers. Thanks. Good. Thank you. Um, when it comes to NFV Bench, I think that's uh, in its uh, sunset mode of operation. That's that's my quick feedback there from uh, uh, the parent project, uh, what we now call what we now call Aniket. Uh, open platform for NFV has become uh, a an Egyptian goddess of the Nile, <laughs> Aniket. <laughs> so um, yeah, yeah, it is kind of nice. So um, we will. Uh, We'll, we'll we'll look forward to the um, to the changes and the updated uh, drafts, uh, Masiak and Mareko, and and um, thanks very much for your uh, discussion today. Thank you. All right, so on to the next, and that is um, Vladimir, and uh, he wants to tell us a little bit about his work at the hackathon, and and um, you know maybe some other topics too. Uh, Looking for, yep, he's still here. Vladimir's still here. So, uh, can can you be heard, Vladimir? Can you hear me now? I, um, if you sp okay. speak, speak a little louder. Can you hear me now? Very, very faintly or, or very low okay. level. Can you hear me now? Much better, thank you. Okay, I uh, haven't had a chance to test the microphone with Meet Echo, so I changed the microphone now. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> it's a short sequence of slides, so uh, we can go to the next one. This this uh, briefly describes the. Uh, the goal for the, the project, obviously, it has the the draft, and then uh, and there are four repositories with uh, a, like the the test code for the the test case implemented in Python. Uh, there is a netconf and young specific code which implements everything related to young and netconf. Uh, Passes the configuration and uh, it calls a command line tool. And this command line tool can be implemented for uh, any type of tester that already exists. And then we have uh, like a reference implementation in hardware. 
which is done in Veriwalk and even a, even a hardware box and a PCB which connects like uh, off the shelf FPGA board so that we can synthesize that. So we can actually uh, measure how good other test generators are implementing this draft if they implement it. So this, this is the first slide and if you go to the next one. Okay. Do you, do you hear me well, or should I speak to you older? I, just... I, I can I can hear you just fine, uh, Vladimir. You're you're much better once you change microphones or something. Okay, good. So this should be fairly simple, even for people without interest in testing. Uh, we have even like tags for the interfaces and the device. So we have a, a tester, and uh, we have the same device implementing the device under test just different SD cards. And this uh, this was the setup for the, the hackathon. So uh, if you go to the next slide, this is uh, the last slide, and this is a detailed uh, description of the implementation. So we, we have a software implementation which uh, you can run on any Linux hardware which is going through the, the socket API and the kernel and the DMA comes down to the Mac. So it is not as deterministic as the other one, which is the hardware uh, very walk implementation, which is just configured through a register interface. And uh, both devices have the same command line to interface. So actually it's very simple to select if you want to use the software implementation or the hardware implementation. And the netconf code, like the, the young core implementation, just calls command line tools. So if you have, if you are a manufacturer of test equipment, you just need to make a command line tool. You don't need to know anything about netconf or young. And it's implemented in a transactional way, like you have a command line tool that starts the traffic generator for a certain interface and then if you make a change then it stops it and uh, starts it again when you do a commit in netconf terms so i'm trying to separate uh, the netconf complexity from what people actually doing traffic generators and otherwise just need to know this is important if this draft is going to be success i think so this underscored text, this has links to the repositories and uh, everything is open source. So if there is anyone interested in how we do it, it's more than welcome to check it out. Very good. Yeah, and I think important uh, point with this next uh, step with the draft is to, to find actually uh, serious organizations which are interested in it. I'm uh, not seeing a, much of a point of pushing the draft before such a party exists. I can continue working on it. You are more than uh, helpful bringing focus to the work so uh, anyone knows that it exists. So we can just continue doing that on the next hackathon. Well, we've, um, I, I, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm pretty much uh, finished with the presentation. The, the last slide just shows the, the amount of work done during the hackathon. If you go down, the last right. one, yes. It's a very minimal amount of work compared to the, the, the entire project. Mm -hmm. So this is just uh, implementing the latest changes. Uh, and it is, uh, yeah, we, we granted also public access to the NetConf node. So uh, there are some existing validation tools that can say if the implementation is okay or not. But this really doesn't have much uh, significance for the, the standardization work uh, with the model. Like this is more like we test our implementation of it, but other people can have their 
obviously own implementations and this is not that significant for the workshop this was more significant for the the hackathon presentation so this presentation we didn't have a chance to present during the, the hackathon so it's uh, not a duplicated effort anyone interested can check the the presentation down here very good all right well um i noticed uh, I'm, I'm just going to, you know, jump in with my participants' uh, comments, uh, of Vladimir. I, I I wanted to check on on something that I thought I saw in the uh, uh, in the benchmarking page for this. So let me let me look a little bit here. Um, I'm basically trying to bring up the uh, the data tracker for this. Where is it? Related drafts. So it'd be down at the bottom, right? Oh yeah. So um, there's uh, there's some Yang validation returned warnings or errors on um, on the the data tracker page that uh, that includes this this draft. So that's. Um, uh, that's something to take a look at. It looks like it's only one warning, though. Let's see. Uh, oh, I am. Uh, I'm certain this is a bug in the Young Lint tool that is one of the validation tools. But uh, we can take it on the mailing list. I will double check and I will uh, reply. But I I double checked it when I submitted the draft, so I will triple check it. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Um, I mean, it, it looks it looks to me here as though there's. Um, it's really something trivial. It's, it, it wasn't even worth um, pursuing with everybody else's time. But I saw this, I did see this red uh, Yang indication before, and I wanted to check that uh, if there was something we needed to do and, and something you knew about, we could um, make that as a comment here today. I think it just, just to bring it to your attention, it's probably something that will turn uh, something quick you can do that can turn that uh, that indication green very quickly. Okay. Thanks. So then let's go back to the slides. And does uh, does anybody have any comments on on the work? I mean, uh, just to, just as a background, we we uh, uh, we did see some pretty good comments from uh, Tom Petch, and um, uh, I think some other reviewers plan to take a look at this. Um, uh, and 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 frankly, this is one of the more this is one of the more active uh, proposals in the working group now. So um, you know we might consider we might consider adopting this work and uh, uh, pushing the draft uh, through um, you know our normal process if uh, if that's what folks want to do. Oh, I uh, I'm open for uh, getting some uh, co co-authors and uh, someone who can help me with the work and i'm open to to accepting anyone who who the group can uh, nominate to join me in this i i think there is very uh, good opportunity to collaborate with the ml search draft because uh, as i see it the, the ml search is the okay command line tool in my view uh, that performs the search while I am implementing a draft uh, specifying the parameters for another command line tool, which is the, the trail. So the, the search algorithm is calling iteratively the trail. And that's what we have standardized in the draft. So these are two drafts which are, uh, they, they, they should be able to work together. So I can make a review of the, the search algorithm draft and propose the interface. I looked into the Python codes and uh, um, in the FDIO repository they have, and I think it's easy to make it a command line tool. 
And it is much easier for a reviewer to work in a command line tool than a gigantic uh, elaborate framework uh, in, uh, written in an objective Python. So we can collaborate with that them, and then we can get uh, some idea of how things can work out with both drafts, I think. Okay, and any, uh, any response to that? Uh, I will respond. Uh, I, I was raising hand, but you were not looking. Uh, oh, sorry. You can tell what I'm looking at, and it wasn't that. I'm, I'm, I apologize for echo. I was just hoping you will switch back to see. Uh, never mind. Uh, from my point of view, uh, MLR search uh, uses a plugable piece of code. It is called measurer, which is uh, doing measurements. Uh, basically, it uh, gets uh, uh, all the traffic definition and uh, duration and rate and uh, expects a result. And uh, I can envision uh, this. Uh, I'm not sure about the Yang, but uh, definitely the CLI tool be part of that uh, measurer. There will be some uh, layer connecting it together, but uh, uh, yeah, definitely uh, MLR search uh, has some requirements uh, which are subsets of uh, what this draft seems to be describing, so uh, it should work. And uh, yes, uh, in uh, FDIO, we are trying to improve our, our code to make it more modular. Basically, we already have some command line utility with ad hoc uh, arguments, uh, so it will be, uh, we are planning to, to make it more let's say systematic. So I will definitely look uh, more deeply into this draft and uh, either change uh, the FDI code to follow it more closely or ask questions, uh, comments uh, on the mailing list uh, when I see something that does not really fit. I'm not sure if I will be doing as much work as to be called co-author, but you can definitely count on me to do reviews and comments. Very good, thanks. I, I, I note that Rob uh, made a comment here, always happy to see IETF standardizing more Yang models. <laughs> yes, of course. So, any, uh, any other uh, comments on, on this? And, and, we've, and we've got one volunteer to do some reviewing, that's good. Anything else on the... Uh, uh, the Yang model draft and the work done at the hackathon. I, I don't have anything to add. I, uh, I'm much better at handling think, uh, things, business uh, on the, the mailing list. So me talking is like an uh, exception. So we, I'm just happy that we, we have uh, some more people on board and we can cooperate. And that is like this online. ITF session uh, more than successful for me. Very good, very good. Well, um, that that's what our that's what our mailing list is for, and and um, we'll try to we'll try to minimize the amount of time that you have to uh, 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 be live on the on the calls, Vlad, if you, if you want. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Have a nice day. All right. Well, well, then I think we've I think we've reached the point in our agenda, which is um, uh, what we call any other business. And um, here, I, I, I quickly wanted to mention that uh, there was an email from uh, KJ and his uh, uh, team of co-authors uh, on the uh, containerized uh, network benchmarking draft. Uh, they they wrote to us about a short update but also said that uh, you know, this meeting was gonna take place in the middle of the night for them, and, and so they would, uh, they would not try to join us this time. But um, uh, that, that message is in our archive if you haven't seen it, and uh, uh, please take a look. That draft is still active as well. So um, uh, just adding that point. All right, so then I'll open the floor to, uh, to any, other, uh, any other business. All right, hearing none, 
it, it remains to me to uh, thank uh, my, my co-chair for uh, her contributions to making things move along here and to Rob for uh, taking notes today, uh, all, the, all the draft uh, developers and authors and commenters. Um, this was, a, this was a, a particularly good meeting to have uh, two hours because we certainly had plenty of comments to deal with, 70 on the list, and I think we earned a two hour meeting uh, without any doubt. So um, thanks everybody for uh, making it worthwhile and, and uh, uh, productive time all around. So we'll see you on the mailing list. Thanks folks.